All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I'd like to do is show you how to solve and graph um, this linear inequality. And basically, ladies and gentlemen, what we're going to do is exactly what we did for equations. All right? And this one's a fairly basic one, but I want to make sure we go over um, exactly what you need to know. So we have x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 9. We're going to follow our process, just like we did before. Here's a fairly basic one, though. There's really only one operation that's being applied to the variable, which is being subtracted by 7. So we're going to add a 7 to both sides. Therefore, I'm going to attain x is greater than or equal to a negative 2. Now, the only difference that we have, so solving equations and inequalities is almost exactly the same, except I'll tell you guys one more um, tip or one more thing to remember. So we have x minus 7 is greater than or equal to negative 9. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. But now what we're going to do is graph our solution. So we're going to create a number line. Now, in the typical number line that you guys have, are familiar with, we always started with 0 in the middle, right? And then numbers to the right were the positive integers, and numbers to the left were the negative, right? When graphing inequalities, you could have a solution that's like 115. So you don't want to have 0 in the, in the center. It, what I prefer to do is have my solution kind of in the center. So this would be negative 2. Values to the right are going to be more positive, so like negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And numbers to the left are going to be smaller, like negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. Okay? You don't have to do it this way. You can, I mean, when you guys take a test, you'll probably be provided with a number line. So you'll just use that. Um, actually, you're not going to have a test on this. Well, at least a school test. But you will have a quiz from me. So anyways, so now to graph this, we are going to put our, what we're going to do is put our open point on there. And then this is why I had you guys write this down. We need to make sure we need to understand, is this a closed point or is this an open point? So since that's greater than or equal to, it's a closed point. Does anybody remember from Algebra 2 what a closed point means? Anybody else? You got two. I'll go to your neighbor just because you got two answers. Yes? Right, but what if I if I say it's closed, what does that mean? Why do we close it? It means it's part of the solution. It's a part of the solution. That what it means is it makes the inequality true. Here's my example. What you can do is take this point, this is what we call test points and testing it. You can take negative two. Remember how we checked our answers for equations? You take your answer and plug it back into the equation. Put your solution point back in for x. Negative two is greater than or equal to negative two. Is negative two greater than or equal to negative two? Yeah, it's true. So when it's true, you shade it in. If this was greater than and not greater than or equal to, then that would be false. That's why we'd have it as an open point. Okay? Most students just like to remember when it's closed and when it's open, um, so forth. Now the next thing is we need to determine where do we shade. Do we shade points to the right? Do we shade points to the left? Again, you can use test points, or a lot of students um, just, you know, I like to read it aloud. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Well, what are the numbers to the right or to the left that are greater than? To the right, right? You can also test it, pick a point, and plug that in. Is 2 greater than or equal to negative 2? Yeah, that's true. So wherever it's true, that's where you shade. And just note, ladies and gentlemen, this, t this number line is going to go on indefinitely. So your answer is going to want to go on indefinitely. So make sure you put an arrow at the end of it. Okay, so you can use test points, or you can kind of go from there. Another big step is when the variable is on the left-hand side, you can see that the inequality symbol kind of points to where it goes. Just note, if this was, um, if I wrote this where the x was on the left-hand side or the right-hand side, it would look like this. These two are exactly the same. So don't always say, oh, the inequality goes this way. This only goes in the direction of the inequality when your variable is on the left-hand side. Just a little FYI. OK? Yes, questions? No? Good? All right. 